According to the World Health Organization, Singapore has the highest health care quality out of 188 other nations worldwide. But how Singapore healthcare becomes the best in the world? Let's find out in the video. Singapore has been rewriting the rulebook of what's possible in health and wellness. In this video, we will go deeper into the remarkable journey of Singapore's healthcare system, from its inception to global dominance and the key factors that make Singapore's healthcare system stand out internationally. So stick around till the end so you may not miss anything worth knowing. Singapore's healthcare system is transforming from traditional practices to the forefront of modern medicine. In the 1800s and into the first half of the 1900s, non-European communities relied on traditional medicine and home remedies for healthcare. The Chinese sought treatment from sinses, Malays consulted bomos or dukans, and Indians turned to Ayurvedic medicine. The winds of change blew in 1819 as Western medical practices arrived with Thomas Prendergast, a sub-assistant surgeon accompanied by Sir Stamford Raffles. Their care extended to the European community and their troops, later joined by assistant surgeon William Montgomery. The appointment of the first rural health officer in the late 1830s marked the dawn of organized public health services. In 1830, Thomas Oxley took the reins as assistant surgeon, overseeing the medical department from 1844 to 1857. The municipal health department emerged in 1887 to cater to growing urban health needs, while the rural and urban health authorities emerged in 1896 to supervise sanitation and health laws. In 1890, the Straits Medical Association, founded by Sir Dr. David James Galloway, facilitated local medical practitioners in researching local diseases. Notable advancements against infectious diseases occurred in the 1860s, introducing laws on vaccination, quarantine, and birth and death registration. The Vaccination Ordinance of 1868 made smallpox vaccination compulsory. Though public health measures were initially insufficient, Singapore's progress continued. The first hospital on the island, the Singapore General Hospital SGH, emerged from humble origins in a British military camp eventually finding its modern home on Outram Road in the 1880s. The 1900s witnessed the establishment of various healthcare institutions, both military and nonprofit, such as St. Andrew's Mission Hospital, Mount Alvernia Hospital, and Kwong Wai Shu Hospital. After Singapore's 1965 independence, Western medicine overtook traditional practices. The family planning campaign and dental health campaign in the 1960s, National Heart Week in the 1970s, and the National Smoking Control Program in the 1980s tackled health issues. We know that it's all not a child's play, right? It requires visionary leadership. And Singapore's healthcare system owes its remarkable success to visionary leaders and strategic decisions that have shaped it into a global model of excellence. Dr. Benjamin Shears, Singapore's second president, brought his medical background and dedication to public health issues, laying the foundation for healthcare reforms. Dr. Lim Sui On, the first director of medical services in the 1980s, pioneered strategies like the National Health Plan, setting the stage for MediSave and MediShield. Strategic decisions underpin Singapore's healthcare success. The preventative approach tackled diseases before escalation with mandatory immunization and health education. Integrated care emerged with regional health systems, offering patient-centric services through a network of providers. Singapore has got some fantastic health insurance schemes, including MediSave, MediShield, and MediFund. MediSave, established under the Central Provident Fund CPF system, allows citizens to set aside funds for future medical expenses and insurance premiums. Contributions, usually 8 to 10.5% of an individual's wage, are compulsory and capped at a $52,000 limit. Employers match 17% of workers' earnings, fostering collective responsibility. MediShield, introduced in 1990 and later replaced by MediShield Life, offers low-cost basic insurance coverage for those with insufficient savings for medical expenses. Premiums are payable from MediSave accounts, ensuring even lower-income individuals can access essential care. Under the Integrated Shield Plan IP, MediShield Life is combined with private insurance coverage for optional benefits in public and private hospitals. This holistic approach tailors healthcare to individual needs. MediFund acts as a safety net for citizens who have exhausted their MediSave and MediShield funds. 
let's discover their two shocking to be true public and private healthcare delivery systems. Institutions like Sing Health and the National University Health System and UHS play pivotal roles in the innovative integration of public and private healthcare providers. Since the 1990s, Singapore's healthcare landscape has transformed. Public hospitals, polyclinics, and specialty centers now operate as government owned corporations within three healthcare clusters the National Healthcare Group, National University Health System, and Sing Health. Sing Health manages a network of public hospitals, including specialized centers for cancer, cardiac care, neuroscience, and more. NUHS, on the other hand, integrates medical and dental schools with clinical services, advancing education, research, and healthcare delivery. Approximately 70 to 80 percent of Singaporeans seek medical care within the public health system, which accounts for about 1.6 percent of the annual GDP. The private healthcare sector, notably represented by Parkway Pantai and Raffles Medical Group, caters to a more exclusive clientele, offering specialized and advanced treatments. Singapore's healthcare system stands out for embracing cutting-edge technology and innovative practices. Telemedicine, for instance, has revolutionized patient care by enabling remote consultations and diagnosis. In 2023, more than 380,000 telemedicine consultations were conducted, offering accessible and efficient health care amid the pandemic. Electronic health records EHRs, seamlessly centralize patient information, enhancing coordination among healthcare providers and minimizing errors. Moreover, Singapore's medical landscape showcases groundbreaking robotic surgeries. The Da Vinci surgical system combines precision and minimally invasive techniques in hospitals like National University Hospital and Singapore General Hospital. This translates to shorter hospital stays, reduced pain, and quicker recovery. In fact, over 3,000 robotic-assisted surgeries have been performed, showcasing the nation's commitment to advanced medical solutions. Now, what role is the government playing in all this? The Singaporean government has played a pivotal role in the success of the country's healthcare system through consistent investments in healthcare infrastructure, research, and development. One notable initiative is the Singapore Medicine Campaign, launched in 2003 by the then Acting Minister for Health, Kwa Boon Wan, to position Singapore as a regional medical hub. Furthermore, the National Electronic Record Program, introduced in 2011, underscores the government's emphasis on technological advancements. With over 280 institutions utilizing this program to facilitate telehealth and telemedicine, the government demonstrates its commitment to integrating technology for better patient care and accessibility. The Pioneer Generation Package PGP, launched in 2014, exemplifies the government's dedication to supporting its elderly citizens. This $9 billion initiative provides health care and social support to around 450,000 Singaporeans born before 1949 over an estimated two-decade span. In addition to this, Singapore's healthcare success is closely intertwined with its strategic investment in training and education for medical professionals. Recognizing the evolving healthcare landscape, initiatives have been launched to attract and retain top talent in the healthcare sector. Sing Health Community Hospital's forward looking approach involves training general practitioners to provide comprehensive care beyond hospital settings. It aligns with Singapore's healthier SG preventative care strategy, focusing on holistic well being. The Sing Health Community Hospital's Office of Learning further solidifies this commitment by training health, social, and community care workers, as demonstrated by Carol Goh's transition from a magazine editor to a patient activity coordinator. You will be surprised to know that Singapore's healthcare excellence has propelled it to the forefront of global medical tourism, making it a sought-after destination for international patients. With an emphasis on quality of care, safety, and destination attractiveness, Singapore has welcomed over 500,000 international patients across specialties like cancer treatment, orthopedic procedures, and heart surgery. Not only this, prestigious awards and partnerships also evidence this global recognition. Its top-tier medical institutions have earned a place among global centers of excellence. The National Skin Center, National Heart Center Singapore, and Mount Elizabeth Hospital are just a few examples that have garnered international acclaim. 
strategic collaborations with renowned institutions like Duke University and Johns Hopkins University have expanded Singapore's research capacity and improved medical training, positioning it at the forefront of healthcare innovation. Singapore has also proactively enhanced its international patient program, forging global partnerships with health payers and insurers. These initiatives cater to diverse cultural backgrounds, bolstering the influx of medical tourists. Such efforts have earned Singapore recognition, such as the Endoscopy Product Innovation of the Year Award at the Healthcare Asia MedTech Awards for Pentax Medical Singapore PTE Limited. Singapore's healthcare system has made significant progress because of the country's strategic expertise and dedication. It has established a healthcare ecosystem that integrates preventative, curative, and rehabilitative treatment by means of visionary leadership, holistic policy, and investments in cutting edge technology. What do you think about their healthcare system? What strategies and reforms should they still need to implement or change? Do let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because many surprises will soon hit your homepage.